Y'all, on October 7th, God gave me a dream. And in this dream, he was giving me a timeline for two specific scenarios, okay? I tried recording this one time and I gave like all the details of the dream to which he told me I was gonna re-record it later and not to post it. And I was like, okay. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing anything before his timing. Um, so the first scenario he gave me, he's allowing me to share the details of this part specifically. I was in a, um, a bakery of some sort and I was responsible for like, or I guess I should say I was tasked with searching out the ingredients for a particular pastry or a particular dessert. And so I'm walking around this bakery, minding my own business when the man that plays Nicodemus from The Chosen walks in. And in the dream, I have this knowing, okay, that there was kind of some bad blood between us, not in the sense that I was holding anything against him. There was a point, I guess, in our history with one another, and I'm just me. I'm me and he's him. He's Nicodemus, right? There was a point in our history where he had judged me. He had misjudged me and he was wrong about how he viewed me and he portrayed me to other people. And so he was feeling regretful about that. So he walks into my place of work, right? And he starts kind of just like walking around. He's kind of sulking. Like you can tell he feels bad. Like you can read it on his... Um, his body, how he feels. Like he looks guilty. He looks like he knows that he did something wrong. He looks like apologetic. And so fast forward, I'm sitting down and I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to make this pastry to make dough or something along the sorts. He sits next to me and he starts trying to like help me out, point out how I should go about doing things. Oh, you can do this. Like this would turn out better, so on and so forth. In my mind, I'm thinking, like, why is he, like, I'm not judging him. I'm not looking down on him. I'm not mad at him or anything. I'm just thinking to myself, why? Like, like I wonder what made him come here and it, try to help me, you know, after everything that happened between us. And so I allow him. I don't keep him from doing it. I don't tell him, hey, back off, dude. I just let him do what he clearly feels the need to do, right? Out of guilt, shame, you know? And then... um, as we're working on this this cake together right and i'm taking his advice or i'm allowing him to lead and guide me in this area because i can tell he feels bad he then apologizes and he says i'm sorry for misjudging you i know i misjudged you i'm sorry for the way i treated you and that was the first scenario, okay? Now the second scenario that God gave me, I'm still in this bakery of sorts, but now I'm in a position of authority. And I'm standing, I'm talking to this woman. Her appearance isn't really, no, it does matter, okay? This is specific to a lot of people, but there are a few people who are gonna resonate with her appearance. And this is really gonna be like, this is really specific to you. But this word is for a plethora of people, okay? Um, how many? Only God knows. Take this back to God for confirmation. That's your job, all right? So um, I'm talking to this girl. She's Caucasian. She's got like, uh, maybe her hair is like right here, maybe a little bit under her shoulders. And it's like wavy, kind of strawberry blonde, kind of ginger, but not too red and she's got light freckles and um she's a little bit a little bit shorter than me i'm five five and um she was very frantic okay she had hazel eyes she was very frantic and she was like kind of freaking out and hyperventilating because apparently her wedding was approaching and she had not taken the time to prepare she had not done her due diligence to prepare as god had been leading her to and i remember thinking in my head how could you not prepare and it came about in our conversation okay here's where the timeline comes in a week to a month she literally said like a week and then i also heard a month so i'm thinking in my head either way like this is a time crunch that we're on because how do you have nothing prepared no wedding dress no shoes didn't know what flowers she wanted didn't know what theme she was gonna go for didn't know the venue she wanted to have the wedding at didn't know anything okay and i immediately get into like boss mode like okay like i was like the wedding coordinator of, of sorts and um i was in charge of helping her with everything so i had to help her figure these things out so god is just saying one you need to expect for those of you who this is for in the name of jesus you need to take this to god for confirmation okay please do not just take this and run with it and jump through hoops because you want this to be for you this is so specific okay um 
One, expect reconciliation. Expect those who have done you wrong. This is really emphasizing like prodigal situations. Expect those who misjudged you. Expect those who saw you through the wrong lens. Expect those who thought that you were one way when you were a completely different way based on their past and whatever, whatever it is that they were thinking and feeling okay. Whatever season that they were going through that caused them to misjudge you, God allowed that to happen. Expect them to come back and apologize in the name name of Jesus. Expect apologies. Expect heartfelt confessions. Expect these people to come back humble. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Nicodemus was expressing humility by coming to my to my place of work, I guess. And that's specific for someone. Someone's prodigal, someone's um, apology is going to take place at your place of work, okay? This person knows where you work. They're going to find you, seek you out, and they're going to come to apologize to you, okay? But God is just saying, expect apologies. These people have been humbled. They are coming back apologetic. They are coming back with humility, operating in humility, okay? God just wanted me to come in and add this little tidbit. He wanted me to kind of um, share with you guys, for those of you who may not know who Nicodemus is or what his story is um, or how he was portrayed in The Chosen, which is an amazing show you should go watch it um so nicodemus is talked about or the specific scene that god used this dream to reflect was um a representation of what took place in john 3 where jesus and nicodemus have a conversation and this conversation takes place after um well in the chosen specifically we're shown that nicodemus he's a pharisee okay so he was one of the people who was judging and condemning jesus for the works that he was doing in his ministry at this time okay so in the chosen we are shown that nicodemus although he was initially judging jesus initially condemning him he was actually starting to take to jesus he was actually starting to grow a curiosity and an admiration towards him because his spirit could identify that Jesus's spirit was pure. There's a particular scene where Jesus and Nicodemus agree to meet. Jesus basically extends an invitation and Nicodemus, um, he meets Jesus in Jesus's own I guess place of dwelling at the time and they sit down and they have a conversation and jesus's behavior towards nicodemus showed okay it portrayed that he understood where nicodemus was coming from and he knew that nicodemus felt bad for the way that he was viewing jesus initially now although this conversation was a huge breakthrough okay in nicodemus's end and even kind of on jesus's end because jesus was able to get through to nicodemus nicodemus's heart was changed jesus had ultimately given nicodemus the choice to come with him to join him to work um, for the kingdom of god to bring people into the kingdom of god right to build god's kingdom and nicodemus he acted out of cowardice he was too scared of what the people around him would say the people who were you know working with him his peers would say and think he was too scared of what other people would do and how they would begin to you know treat him so he rejected jesus's offer not because he didn't want to because we see in the tv show that he is beating himself up he is grieved he is heartbroken because he so badly wanted to be by jesus's side he could identify that he loved and cared for this man and that this man was going to change things and that this man was changing things because he was indeed is indeed the son of god but nicodemus's perception of himself um, was that of um, an insecure one. He did not think or believe or feel that he had what it took to be by Jesus' side. He didn't believe that he was even worthy of walking alongside Jesus, especially after how he had treated him or kind of looked at him in the beginning. So God um, brought this to my mind because this part of the word is going to pertain to those of you who you are going to be receiving apologies. You are going to have people from your past who mishandled you, who mistreated you, and they're going to be coming back and they're going to be confessing, they're going to be apologizing, but 
not everyone is meant to continue walking into what God has for you by your side. Not everyone is meant to remain in connection with you, okay? So just because someone is coming back and apologizing, this could be an old ex, this could be an old friend, this could be a family member, this could be someone who you used to work with, this could be anybody, any situation, any circumstance. God is saying their humility and their apology does not necessarily mean, and he's going to confirm that to you, he's already been speaking to you about this person, about this situation, does not mean that they are to continue moving forward with you. Not everyone can come with you into your promised land, even if they are expressing humility. They are expressing humility because God is putting it on their heart to come forward and operate in this manner. This is something that he is doing to set you free, to set this person free so that y'all can continue moving into what he has for each of you. All right. And then, of course, there are those of you who are receiving reconciliation, apologies, and these relationships are meant to continue progressing. You are meant to continue to progress with these people who are returning from your past. So it is so important that you take this word to God and you make sure that you are not applying the concept that someone is meant to move forward with you to someone who is not and vice versa. And then two, weddings are taking place kingdom marriages are happening swiftly okay god has been putting on his daughter's hearts to prepare to partner with him to plan for these unions y'all need to do it y'all need to take that seriously this is not a joke because when he says you're getting married and you don't know how soon it's going to happen you don't want to be sitting there looking like a fool because you didn't take the time to prepare when he tells you partner with him to plan for certain things look up the colors what flowers would you like you don't need to know like the nitty-gritty details he just wants you to sit with him and ask him just do some research look at colors you would be interested in look at dresses you might be interested in he just needs you to start he just needs you to start, okay? Because if you're getting married in a week, which some people, he is saying, there are some people who something regarding your marriage breakthrough, a wedding is taking place within a week from the time that you receive this word, okay? Oh my goodness. And then some of you, a month, okay? Anywhere from a week to a month, okay? This is such a specific word. You need to take this back to God for further confirmation. I'm excited. Speaking of excitement, I almost forgot to add this in here, okay? Three days after I had this dream, which was on October 7th, so October 10th, I was sitting and thinking about like why God, well really rather Holy Spirit had me thinking about why God brought in the strawberry cake and like well really why he used it. And he just spoke a sweet affair. Okay, and so I put that in my notes and just now I was trying to record and add that in and he led me to stop really quickly and look up the symbolism of strawberries. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I never even thought to do that. So I looked it up, y'all. I'm just gonna read what Holy Spirit drew my attention to, okay? Strawberries are a symbol of purity and sensuality, fertility and abundance, humility and modesty. Okay, the strawberry is a symbol of passion, new love, and then further down, it says strawberries symbolize the start of spring, the sweetness of life, purity, and love. Okay. Oh my goodness. I am so... One, I love this because strawberries are one of my favorite fruits ever, like neck and neck with mangoes, but that's not important. And okay, so God is just saying when he's talking about or when he's really drawing us to the fact that... Um, strawberries are a symbol of sensuality and passion and fertility he is speaking about these marriages okay these god ordained marriages some of you your reconciliation is going to be with the person that he has called you to marry for his glory these marriages okay not just prodigal situations but in general are going to exude the love and glory of god okay people are going to witness Witness what it is truly like to be in a godly marriage the love that you and this person are going to have between the two of you and um you know god's presence in the center of your relationship your marriage 
it is going to shake the foundations of people's faith, okay? People are going to start viewing, thank you, Holy Spirit, people are going to start viewing marriage and relationship differently through what God does in your marriage, okay? And then when it says that strawberries symbolize the start of spring, sweetness of life, and purity, God is just talking about new beginnings in general. Like you, for those of you who this word is for, um, whenever God says this word is for you, because this is prophetic okay this is going to be for some people now it's going to be for some people later but he's just saying you have entered a new season the journey that you are about to embark on okay and he is saying have you felt the shift have you felt the shift have you felt the shift oh my goodness holy spirit the journey that you are about to embark on is one that you have never experienced before. The things that you are about to experience for yourself, not just hearsay, not just hearing people's testimonies, not just receiving prophetic words, you are about to be walking in these new experiences. Have you felt the shift? Because the shift was your sign to... Um, to take heed and really just pre prepare yourself as much as you can mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for what's about to go down in your life. Because God says it's about to go down. It is going down. I'm so excited. And the fact that he didn't have me release it up until right now, I think is very strategic. I know is very strategic because I thought I was supposed to release this before this, um, this week started. And today is October 14th. Yeah, today's October 14th. I thought I was supposed to release this earlier, but he said, no, you need to wait. Okay, so y'all take this to God, sit in the secret place and ask him, God, is this word for me? Ask him and then ask him how you can come into agreement with this word outside of just saying I come into agreement with it. Like, you know, ask him how you can move in faith and move in agreement with what it is that he is having me release over you. Okay, this is all the holy spirit he didn't give me any scripture he did not give me scripture to release so i'm not going to add anything to this word because that's not my job you need to take this to god for confirmation and allow him the time to speak pray over your mind anoint yourself as you're going into this prayer and as you're getting ready to ask him if this is for you okay make sure that you are consecrating yourself make sure that you don't have any doors open make sure that you um renounce anything that you might have come into agreement with that was not god's will for your life make sure that you are moving in obedience with what god has been instructing you to do if you feel like you're having a hard time hearing god he wants you to sit and ask him, what was the last thing I told you to do? What was the last instruction I gave you that you brushed off that you thought wasn't a big deal? So you decided I'm not going to do it. Ask him, ask him, and he's going to reveal it to you. God wants you to be in alignment. He wants you to be prepared for what he has in store for you. Okay. This is going to be partial confirmation and then a lot of revelation. All right. He's got more he wants to reveal to you. But yeah, remember that I love you. God loves you so much more. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.